So the next step then um, would be to put this thing in place. Um, and I, I, what I want to do is just give you an easy number so that you can learn the software, but I won't be doing you a service because the real point of this class is to understand how to design in a digital medium. So when we're creating stairs, right? So now we're starting to get into actually creating something with a little bit more complexity. So I want to move this slab up, but I also want to create stairs. Stairs have a particular property that's very important to understand. Um, for us, I'm going to simplify the features, but essentially, um, a flight of stairs usually comes in uh, risers and treads. The riser is, for all intents and purposes, seven inches tall. Okay, the tread is typically for like a residential application, 11 inches deep. So, for me, um, in this particular case, I'm going to simplify that to be 6 inches and 12 inches, which is kind of okay for exterior applications more than interior, but it'll give us a sense of uh, just kind of like the effect of stairs. What I want you to understand is the effect, and I don't want you to get hung up on simple arithmetic, so I'm going to simplify it to 6 and 12. Um, so when you're looking at this uh, stair sketch that I did where we basically just have a, a block for the first stair that gets moved on top of it and half of a, a block width back for the next stair. Um, we're going to use 6 inches tall and if we want 12 inches, let me go up here, if this is 6 inches and this is 12 inches, then that means this needs to be 24 inches, right? So we're thinking ahead, playing a game of chess here. Um, also, we need to think about how high our steps are going to be if we want it to interface directly with a six inch slab. So we can use any six inch multiple, that's why I simplified it to six inches, um, and then our, sl our slab will essentially become the top riser. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is elevate that second floor 10 feet. 10 feet? 10 feet? Yeah, I'll use 10 feet. Let me turn the gumball off. I haven't shown you that yet. So to move something into place, right? I showed you a little bit about kind of anchoring a box on a corner and how I do the move command. So this is recap, recap now. Um, if I just want to move it up 10 feet, I activate the move command. And I click somewhere off to the side of my model so I don't accidentally snap to something. And I click an anchor point. And remember, this is much like the line command where you tell it how far, then you tell it what direction, and you click. So 10 feet, hold shift, and click in the up direction. Project is off? Project is off, yes. Well, it does, actually, in this case, it doesn't matter as long as you're using the front view. Or, well, front, right, top. Project is fine to use. So I'm going to very quickly just pause and make sure that everybody is to that point before we move on to developing a stair. Okay, so this is this is essentially where things are going to get possibly a little crazy. Not too crazy, um, but it could get a little wild. Um, I'm going to create a new layer. So I just went into my layers panel and I clicked on the new layer tab. I'm going to call this one stairs. I'll change the color to something easily visible. So notice here, guys, that I 
kind of, I used red, I used brown, I used orange. Um, I skipped over gold and yellow. That's a very, very important distinction to make because re if you recall, when you select something, it shows up yellow. It's my best practice opinion to never, ever, ever set a layer to yellow. And gold is just a little bit too close to yellow for me. So I skip right over it. So that's just something that I find to be uh, very annoying and I think you should not do it. Um, so under stairs, when you activate the layer, we're basically just gonna start building the boxes. Um, for me, I don't really like to spend too much time doing the calculations to kind of rectify um, precisely where I need to start if I'm starting from the bottom. I could go up to the top and start there, uh, but you know, why not just draw it off to the side, give myself as many you know, treads or risers as I need, and then move it back in. So I know that I drew this thing on the floor and I went positive six. So when I moved it 10 feet up, that means that I actually have 10 feet between the slab at the bottom and the underside of the slab below. So I'm gonna need 20 steps. Um, the other thing that you can do if you're not sure is type in the distance command and go from a visible corner. So right here down to there and I've got 10 feet. Distance. And I just clicked on a corner that I knew was directly above another corner in my model. And then I click that. Or you can grab, you know, like one of the edge corners or something like that. What was the six? The number six one again? The number six. Oh, the number six is going to be the thickness of, or the height, rather, of my steps. So if, I, if they're only six inches tall, that means every foot has two of them. And if it's 10 feet tall, that's 20 steps. Okay. All right, guys. So, um, so here's the, the, the practice, really, the way I do this. I know I need 20 steps. Um, so I'm just going to make a box that fits that profile, right? So it's going to be 24 by however wide I need it to be to fit in that stair. So I'm going to, if I, I know that this is five feet wide, and I want my stair to be to fit in really, really cleanly, really smoothly into that spot. So um, I'm going to make it, I'm just going to draw it off to the side here. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to turn project on. What? Sorry. No. Uh, you, could, you could do box. Sorry, I did a rectangle, but you can do box too. Um, so project I'm going to turn on, and I'll use box. Thank you for the suggestion. And I need to use an at symbol, remember, because I'm now just out in space somewhere. At five feet, comma, 24 inches or two feet. And then six inches tall. So it looks really, really flat right now. It doesn't quite look like the proportions of a stair. And that's because I need to uh, copy and paste it on top of one another to get my stair height. Yes, the width of the stair is five feet. Let me do this so that you can see. There we go. I'm doing this for your sake. You got the two bottom ones. It's six inches tall. Oh, so you got that. Two feet, yeah. 24 inches is two feet. Yeah. Okay. So um, let me let me bring you guys back in here for uh, one quick final thought. So I know that you know how to make the box, so I don't need to stop and make sure that you're all there. Um, this is the important part. We're talking about workflow now. Now, how do you make it? Um, how do you make it efficient? So 
for me, what I would do, um, what most people do when they're just learning the software is copy and paste many times. So if I need to do 20 of these, I can select the object and go to copy. And this is how it works. I need a point to copy from and a point to copy to. So it's the exact same feature as the move command or uh, the first step of the array command. And recall now, this is what we're looking at. We can start from this point and we can end at this point. So to do that, we need to activate a new type of point. Midpoint. So now I've introduced endpoints, I've introduced intersections, and now the next one we're going to turn on, it's in the bottom left corner, four object snap features in from the left, mid. And now what you'll see is when I select the bottom left corner, which I'll do right now, it leaves a little ghost of the original box. And I can select the midpoint of the top of that box. So do you all see that, right? The midpoint is measuring exactly where the middle of uh, the, the top face of that box is. And then you click, and it places it. OK. So that created one. And if you notice, it's asking you to replace another one, and then another one, and then another one. So the, the very simple way of doing this is to just go to midpoint, go to midpoint, go to midpoint, go to midpoint. Uh, I just made a mistake. So that's how you begin to develop this kind of repetitive component like that. So that's a thought. You can do that 20 times if you like. That's the easy way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to use an array feature. And I don't typically do this very much, but um, array linear. So array linear is going to be sort of similar. Um, when you select the object to array, I forget whether or not I need a curve that's the full length. I might, but we'll see. Um, select the object to array, hit enter. The number of items, I'm going to want 20. First reference point here, next reference point there. 20 of them. Ooh, my stairs are not going to fit. <laughs> hmm? I did array linear. I'll show you guys again. So. How tall? Yeah. Six inches. Yeah. I'm probably going to play around with the length of them because that's not going to fit in my space. But the, all right. So uh, showing you guys again. Array linear. Hit enter. It asks you to select the object to array. So I select it and hit enter. I type in how many I want. I know I need 20. So I hit enter. The first reference point is going to be the bottom left corner. The second reference point is going to be the midpoint. And it automatically copies 20 of them in that direction on that line. Linear, yes. OK. So what I want to see is that you guys have gotten to this point before we move on. 